A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hunters Channel. Today, we are fortunate enough to have Tom Panis in our office in Hunters Agency, and what we do in the Hunters Academy, um, with your support and your help, Tom, you've been coming to our office and train our team. We big believers in training. Yeah. And we can see the difference between organizations that implement and adopt training method in the team and invest in, in the training and other companies that they don't give any uh, attention to this part of their business. We get that from some agents, they say it's a waste of time. We've know it all. Um, and, but you know, it's just, I learned that before. There's nothing new, but it's not surprisingly, but it's, that's what we've been like, you know, um, seeing with you. Every time we come to train us on something, it's different and we learn something new. What would you advise real estate agents about training and how can they, they invest in their own personal development? So the first thing is, Ramirez, we've got to accept it. The best real estate agents and the best real estate companies are learning organisations. These are people that say, as part of our business, we're going to incorporate, like you've got the Hunters Academy, we're going to incorporate a philosophy and culture of self-improvement. Um, so that's really just an attitude to have, that you're always curious, always looking. Even I, 38 years in real estate, I'm constantly looking for that next idea that's going to give me a competitive advantage in a challenging marketplace. Um, I think also that we must sweat in training so that we don't bleed in battle. Sporting teams, sporting teams, Ramuse, they practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so they can appear on the big stadium on Saturday. They know how to kick a ball. They know how to pass a ball. They know the basics, but what they do is they're sharpening the saw. That's what training does. That's true. And um, you, you can see the difference between um, real estate agent who trained and practiced and uh, watched something like, you know, and learned from it and someone who doesn't do anything about it. Correct. And that reflects the result, like, you know, as a real estate agent. Um, what would you advise a real estate agent that just started in the industry, new, fresh, didn't do anything in real estate? And what would you advise a real estate agent who has been in the industry for 10 years? Okay. If you're a new agent, I've got to tell you, number one is you've got to get rid of the philosophy, I'm only new. If you're good enough, you're old enough. There are people now in real estate that are having great success, even just up to one or two years in the business. The second thing is, please don't expect to make a fortune the first six months. When you first join an office, you want to learn about product knowledge, learn the values, learn basic stuff like contracts, learn the dialogue and language, and what you want to do is build your personal brand as well as building your database and start building a pipeline of potential sellers. That's what you should be doing if you're a brand new agent. Also. If I'm a brand new agent, I'm sitting there and I'm a sponge. I'm watching at everyone else in the office. What are they saying? What are they doing? What's the dialogue that they're using? What's their approach? What's their operating pattern look like? What time do they start? What time do they leave? How do they handle objections? What you're doing is you're being a sponge and you're ripping off and duplicating information from others who have got the results that you want in the future, right? Now, if you're an agent that's been going on for a while, hopefully you've got to an attraction agent level. And that basically is, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. That's being an attraction agent. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. You become a magnet for business. However, if you've actually been around a while and you're not getting called in, it could be possible that you haven't been reaching out to your clients. So what I would say to those agents, go back, reach out. Even a simple script like this, hey Ramiz, it's Tom Panos here from Hunters. I want to apologize. I should have been in touch earlier. Let me ask you, how has the current real estate market impacted your plans? Just reach out. You don't have to be that good. You've just got to be there. I don't think people want an agent. I think people want human beings that care. Show them that you care. I build better agents by building better humans. That's my model in real estate. So whether you're brand new or whether you've been in the business for a while, 
fundamentally, we're about working out in the market, not in the office. Very true. And also, you find, look, um, real estate agents who's been in the industry for a long time, and they started to be repetitive. Look, you know, uh, look, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Is that true? Going back to the basic, and if I got 10 or 20 years experience in real estate, would it be good advice to tell me, hey, look, you know, think how did you get your first listing and go back and do it again? Yeah, I think there's a great saying, nothing breeds failure like success. If you've been successful for a while, there's a possibility you've started dropping the basics. You started cutting corners. Comfort zone. Comfort zone. You know, things start coming your yeah. way and you stop reaching out as much. Or you used to have a set to sell meeting and you stop doing it. Or you used to ring your vendors most days, but you ring them once a week or whatever it is. The point I'm saying is you've got to be very careful because as I said to you, when you're most successful is when you're most vulnerable because that's the time you get complacent and you stop doing the things you did when you first started in real estate. Tom, 15 years ago, I met you and I had a chat with you and I was just still new, still starting my, my career. And you told me, Ramez, you're gonna be the purple cow. Yeah. Can you tell them what's the purple cow and give them the advice that you told me? Okay, so purple cow is a metaphor and it comes from a book written by a great marketer called Seth Godin. And it's basically, if you were driving through the French countryside and you looked and there was just paddocks and there was cows everywhere. The first set of cows that you'd see, they grab your attention. But after driving for half an hour, if you've seen 500 cows on the left-hand side and another 500 on the right-hand side, you become they become boring. In fact, they become invisible. When you see a purple cow, it's, wow, how's that cow purple? So for me, purple cow is about standing out. Purple cow is about being different. Purple cow is about adding value and not being a commodity and being part of the commodity dungeon. So you've got to ask yourself in real estate, there are 60,000 real estate agents in Australia. That number has gone down in the last 12 months because of the lower volume stock. But now I think it's hovering around 52, 53,000. Ramiz, think about it. There are so many agents, even in one suburb, sometimes there can be 100 salespeople that service an area. What are you doing to stand out? What are you doing saying, hey, I'm different, look at me? That's what the concept of Purple Cow is, and that's something that you've learned to do very well yourself. Absolutely. And it's, it's not about dropping your selling fee, because you can find a lot of competition, but we we'll learn from you, you get to show value to the clients. Do you agree that sellers, that they're selling the most expensive asset in their life, they don't want to pick up the cheapest real estate agent? They want to pick up the best real estate agent? Yeah, well, I've got to say to you, I've only just come back from a vacation and I was watching my daughter plan her next holiday with her friends. And she actually spent more time planning a one week holiday than what many owners do selling an asset worth $2 million, right? So think about it. Some people spend more time planning a one week holiday in Bali than selling an asset in Parramatta for one and a half million dollars. It's the biggest asset and it's the last remaining tax haven in Australia. Every dollar extra we get for a home that's a family home, we pay no tax. You've got to earn twice as much money at work to get the same financial benefit. If you sell a home for more than 100 grand, that 100 grand goes into your pocket. That's profit. But if you make $100,000 at work, you're going to pay, I don't know, 30, 40%, depending on your tax bracket, whether you're a company or not. So Ramiz, to me, selecting an agent and making sure you don't cut corners in the selling process is so important. And the reason why is that it can change the trajectory of your life. If you get good money, if you pick a great agent, they get you a great result. It can change the direction of your life and your family's life in the future. So what's the difference between um, a standard real estate agent and a superior real estate agent? In the result, up to 10%. In price, so something that might have sold for a million sells for 900 if you pick a bad agent. 
Um, so what's the difference? That's expensive. Oh, do, it's an expensive uh, mistake. Like, uh, you know. that's, that's, <laughs> that's like if the, I always say to people, if you think hiring a professional is expensive, wait till you hire an amateur. That gets really expensive, right? That's very true. So what makes a great agent? Number one, hardworking. Number two, they can read the play. Number three, they're very good at getting a property to its optimal value. So you've always got to pick house price maximizers, not commission minimizers. You always pick an agent that gets you the most money, not saves you the most marketing, right? That's a big thing you've got to do in real estate. And the other thing you've got to do is pick an agent that can advise you on how to have your property presented because with styling and incredible photography and video work, you can take something. You know what we do in real estate? We take a glass of water and we put it in a Pellegrino bottle with a green label and we brand it. We make it special. It's still, it's, it's still an odorless, clear liquid, but one sells for 10 times more than the other because of the way it's presented and marketed. Very true, very true. Look, if I'm a real estate agent and I'm, I've been in the industry for 10, 20 years and I want to take my business to the next level. Yeah. What would be the best three advisors that you can give me to move my business from A to Z? If you're a real estate owner? Yes. Okay. The first thing is, I would say that real estate ownership is basically two things. Recruitment, retention. Your job is to recruit. Your job is to retain. Retain the good people. All right? So when you're a business owner, not only are you listing real estate, you're listing people. So I would say become a lister of people. The second thing is I want to let you know when you're a great business owner, the fastest way to change your profits is to change the culture. Create an environment that we're here to do business. I mean, there are some real estate offices that are like adult daycare centers. They're just people that hang out. They just come into the office, have a coffee, you know, chit chat, talk to the receptionist, might pop out, have a coffee, go to an appointment, end of the day comes home, five o'clock they're home, hi sweetie, I'm finished, done, done my work for the day. That's how they operate. But great business owners create an environment where they say, in the morning we're all prospecting. They give them the tools, they give them the tech tools, they give them the data, they give them the information. They create, they get rid of the friction to make it easy for these people to flourish. They're probably the main things. But I've got to tell you, for me the secret of great businesses is leadership. Profit in a real estate business is the reward you get for great leadership. What would be the most important skills for a successful real estate agent to have? I think the ability to handle rejection, the ability to understand that we're gonna be having long grinds of hard, slog, negative feedback, we're gonna get let down. We're gonna have the heights of exhilaration to the depths of depression in 24 hours in our business. And that you're gonna to have to have the ability to go to bed at night, press the reset button and do it again. So for me, one of the biggest things is your ability to be able to be persistent in a road of disruption, in a road of negativity, and in a road of rejection. Because if we're in real estate, we're in the business of rejection. So your ability to make rejection your best friend is critical. You know, Tom, what I learned from you and I really love, there's nothing called negative. If you get negative feedback, it's actually positive. Mm. That's mean this client is interested in doing something, but yeah. they have to start the negotiation somewhere. They yeah. can come up with something negative. Oh, look, I really love this. This house is, um, is a bit small, but how much? <laughs> Yeah. So they will get to start somewhere. So there's no such a thing called negative. It's our job to convert this negative into a positive. 100%. Is that correct? Yeah, I think what it is, is I never see a no or negative feedback as anything else but data. It's information. Information for you to actually change the direction or the approach that you're going through. But I love it when a client there's a conversation and there's tension in the client, right? Because to me, it says, hey, we're interested. That's why we're actually having this conversation. The ones that, the ones that I, you know, 
would prefer not to have are the ones that say, listen, thanks for everything, it's all good. They're not interested, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right? So, listen, if they turn around and they say, hey, this thing's overpriced, what they're saying is, hey, we actually like the property, but we yeah. don't like the price. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a complaint. Correct. It's not objection. Correct. It's like a complaint. It's, like saying, it's, yeah. it's a complaint against the price. So, yeah. And at that point, you can turn around and say, well, can I ask you, what yeah. price on a contract would represent good value for you? Exactly. It's like someone goes out and it's raining today. Say, oh, it's raining today. There's no objection. 100%. It's going to rain. Correct. But they're complaining about it. Correct. There's something you start taking the negotiation from there. 100%. You should never look at objections, complaints, rejection as being a, a no. It's, a, it's, it's, it's basically feedback for you to take that information and to help move the client move forward. And you can always look, you know, find where they, they see value and where they don't see value and you just you know, start from there and, and then you start to convince them or we start to show oh, them the value, oh. where the value is. Because some of the clients, they walk into a house and they don't see the potential. They only can see four walls, but Correct. they don't know what can be done. Well, great real estate agents are able to create a visual, um, imaginary perception of what this property could look like for them, right? After so the, a renovation job? 100% after a renovation, well, after knock maybe knock, knocking it down, maybe knocking out a wall. The issue is there's an art to showing property. Over the last decade or so, we've become so dependent on open for inspections that we've often lost the art of actually showing real estate. When I was selling real estate in the late 80s and in the 90s, Ramirez, all our appointments were private inspections. We would meet a buyer, we would put them in the car, we would then talk to them, we would diagnose their problem, we would often show them two or three properties, they'd often buy the third one, we'd show them because we'd learn from their feedback. We got close with the buyer. Here at some of these opens, it's like it's a Boxing Day sale at David Jones. 50 yeah. people walk in, you don't know who's in who. In half an hour, in you half don't even an hour. get a chance to talk to all of them. Correct. You yeah. can't. You, how can you help people if you don't talk to people? So for me, it's very simple. Like when you talk to buyers, just ask if they say they're not interested, say, can I ask you, is it the price or is it the property? And get talking from there. Absolutely. It's, it's asking questions like, you know, learning about a situation of a seller, why they're selling, and a buyer why they're buying. Now, with, when, um, when we go to a listing appointment as a real estate agent, um, and we talk to the vendor and like, understand their situation, where they're going, what they're doing, now it's not just the price. It's the price that they're selling and the price that they're buying, and it's a combination of like, you know, a lot of things. So for a real estate agent to go sit down and connect with you as a vendor and try to help you to move to the next step in, in, in your life, it's a lot more than selling a property. 100%, I think in the, you know, most people that sell a property often buy a property. Yeah. So what you're looking at is two chapters in the book. Chapter one, what we sell for. Chapter two, what we buy for, right? So I think what great real estate agents do is they don't look at things in isolation. They look at things holistically. They get a really good view of the client situation. What problem are we solving? That's what great agents do. When they're sitting in front of a client, they're sitting there and they're thinking, what's gonna get this client from being stuck to unstuck? And they're listening there. They're trying to cue in to try and find out what's important for this client. Why are they in this situation? And what situation do they want to be in? That's what a great agent does. Poor agents, they're just going in there with commission breath. They're just looking at one thing and the, all they wanna do is do a deal and get out of there. That's not what great agents do. Great agents are looking to have clients for life. And that's when you get referrals. 100% raving fans. And you will become attractive agent. Exactly right, because when the word gets out, use Ramiz, use Ramiz, they'll come to you. And we know when people come to you, the dynamics change versus you going to them. With a real estate agent, like, I don't know this area, buying agent. Do you need a, a certain license to be a buying agent only or not really? Real estate agents, my understanding of the law is real estate agents can be buyer's agents. Can buyer's agents as well. Yeah. We have been doing that in our business. So we've been helping clients to purchase. We don't charge any fee, like it's part of our service and part of our commitments. Yeah. And you know, you know what? It didn't like ever, ever affect our businesses. It improved it and inc increased it. And it's time consuming. When you sell a home for someone and they trust you, they know you, as you just said, 
a while ago that you connect with the clients. You become part of their life. You become part of their family. You're going to be the trusted agent when they come to buy. They send you something, say, hey, what do you think of that? What do you think of this price? I want to buy here. I want to buy here. It's got to be, Ramirez, it's got to be the absolute most underused, biggest secret strategy in real estate. You want to prospect? Work buyers. They're out there. They get treated poorly. Most real estate agents are looking for the buyer that can buy just today and not worrying about others. But good real estate agents are working with buyers. Often they're working with buyers and they're actually sending them properties that other agents have got. Because what they're saying is, hey, listen, you might not buy from me, but I'm going to service you. And I'm going to prove to you that whenever you need to engage an agent, I'm going to be the one. So I would say to every agent watching this, work buyers. In fact, I would say, Ramirez, that every agent should aim to have up to 25 buyers that they're working with at any one time. The most neglected person in the transaction is the buyer. They just don't get treated well. There's one, one worse than that. Browsers. Yeah. And I think that's a big mistake a lot of real estate agents they do. If someone is browsing only, some real estate agents look at it as a waste of time. I'll tell you a, a short story. Yesterday, I listed a property and uh, the comments about $70,000. And the guy, he rang me, said, Ramez, I want you to sell my home. I said, okay, thank you. How did you hear about me? He said, look, I've seen you work around. And I came to send him a message. You know when you send someone a text message, yeah. you see the history? Yeah. This person made an inquiry yeah. via text message from 2020. Every single home I sold in the area, Ramez, how much this house sold for? And I looked at my language when I texted him. Uh, like I was very nice to him <coughs> and very accommodating and answering him. I, I asked him a couple of times, do you have any interest in selling or buying? Or, like he said, no, no, not now. So you don't underestimate who's making the call, who is calling you or who is texting you. It's not a waste of time. If no. you're there for a long term. So you're going to have to make a decision in your real estate career if you're an agent. Are you going to play the long game or the short game? If you're going to play the long game, which is the one that's going to guarantee you long-term success and a sustainable career in real estate remiss, it's going to mean that the cycle of the relationship with that client is going to be years, not days. And as you've seen from that text message thread, that it can take two, three, four years of uh, touch points with a client before they actually do business. So 100% uh, let go of the commission breath, be someone that goes out and serves people. How can I solve these people's problems? And don't ever think, which some agents do, and obviously you didn't in this instance because you've stayed in touch there, don't ever think to yourself, oh, I'm not gonna waste my time with them. They're just browsing, they're a wasty, right? I've gotta tell you, that's the beginning of a client for life. That's right, that's right. No one's gonna waste time to just no. search for properties, how much sold for, or attend auction, or come to open home. Correct, they, they there's an interest. They definitely want to do something. Correct. But they're not telling you, or you didn't answer the right question. Correct. Um, look, I wanna ask you something about the market. So, do you think, or do you believe, there's a good market and bad market? So I don't, I don't subscribe to that view. I think, I think if the market is bad for the seller, it's good for the buyer. If the market is bad for the buyer, it's good for the seller. But I don't, I don't care about that anyway, because all I care about is if I'm an agent and I can put deals together and I know how to list and I know how to close and I know how to have tough conversations, which you need to have in this market, crucial conversations, and I know how to market and I know how to prospect, I will make money in all markets, whether they're a buyer's market or seller market. Because the great news about real estate, Ramirez, is unlike crypto or selling shares, which are done purely for financial reasons, nearly all transactions in real estate are done for lifestyle purposes. They're done because people are dying, they're getting sick, they're getting old, they're changing schools, um, they need a smaller house, they need a bigger house, they're doing a tree change, they're doing a sea change, they're doing it for lifestyle purposes. So if you're a great real estate agent, it doesn't matter what the market's doing, you'll be doing deals. Absolutely, and that's what matter, because um, some real estate agents, they try to find excuses 
for themselves to fail. Yeah. So, so oh, it's a bad market now. Oh, there's a lot of supply. Oh, we're always going to have a struggle. We're always going to have competition. We're always going to have people that try to discount the selling fee to get a business. It's always going to be there. It's 100%. not going to end. But when all this happening, people they succeed. Yeah. They they make money and they list and they sell and become successful, become very famous and and well known in, in your Look, core area. Re Ramirez, winners get results. Losers make excuses. It's as simple as that. I can't make it even more straightforward than that. So at the end of the day, you've got to ask yourself, if it's got to be, it's up to me. We have people, even in your own office, there are some people that are earning um, a lot of money because they're serving and helping a lot of people. And in the same office, you've got other people that are struggling. Same office, same brand, same suburb, same economy, same interest rate, same prime minister, same premier. What's the difference? The weather's the same for both of them. It's the individual. So it does matter, one agent versus another agent. That's a far more important thing. And what I can tell you is, there's no better market than a changing market for an agent to stand out. No better market. Very true. You know, Tommy, you are a treasure for the real estate industry. You know why? Because you change your training every day. Every day we learn something new from you. If the market is up, you help us how to catch up. If the market is down, you help us how to come up from where we're at. So it's very important for us as real estate agents to change our training, change our method of thinking, our way of thinking, uh, and what we do to be successful in any market. Yeah, well, I've got to tell you, my audio matches my video. I skip to work every day, even as this, as I'm talking, shooting this video here today. You know, I've told you that I've, I've got off a flight and I actually haven't slept, you know, because it was an overnight flight. Um, what I can say to you is that I've made passion my paycheck. And for me, I get no bigger kick. Agents, you get a kick out of getting results for buyers and sellers. And I get a kick out of seeing real estate agents that were selling, say, 20 properties a year. And now that, you know, I'll run into them and they'll say, you know, I've, I've hit 65 properties a year or I've hit 80 properties a year. I get my kick, not out of income, out of impact. That's yes. at the stage of life that I'm at, you know? That's a Don't reward. Get, yeah, that's a reward. For me, it matters to me, Ramiz. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that I'm the Smith family going around doing free training, but I really value being able to see lives transform because of information that we bring into the market in a very cost-effective way. We've made it available even if someone has very little income to actually educate themselves. We, we provide that model. And many of the people, including yourself, which I've been working with you for like around a decade or so thereabouts, you know, these clients have grown. I've looked at, you know, your office when I started doing work with you at Hunters. You know, we sat there in that little small room. We were all squashed in there. Um, and, you know, there was a handful of people, you know, today we had around 20 salespeople sitting around in, in your office. You know, we've got videographers and social media agencies engaged in the business. Um, yeah, the business is just this extraordinary opportunity. As I said to you, we can make more money than the Prime Minister of Australia in our business. It is just a golden opportunity. It is, it is. And it's simple. It's not hard. No. It's just like, you know, if we think about it, it's not, it's not like a rocket science. It's just something simple. Being yourself, being like, you know, um, like, you know, humble, regardless, like, you know, how much money you make, if you're humble and you, you, you put the best interest of the clients, number one, you're going to be great at it. Yeah, I think that's very important because I've got to tell you, Remus, right now, an agent's got to be very careful on social media. What you're posting, ask yourself before you post it, how is it going to make the client feel? Do they need to see another one of my flash cars? Do they need to see that I'm flying business class? Do they need to see my latest watch? Is that client going to feel better about it? So before you post things, ask yourself, how will it make the client feel, right? Very, very important because deep down, people... We're number three from the bottom in reputation, Remis. Mm. We don't do ourselves any favours by going out there. I mean, think about this for a moment, Remis. Imagine Remis, a dentist that followed a real estate agent strategy where they're posting content on their social media. What would they write? 20 patients today, uh, million dollar year, uh, hashtag best dentist in <laughs> Australia, hashtag killing it. 
you know, dentists don't do that, don't, right? No. But yet in real estate, you scroll through the social media pages, you scroll through the timelines of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and what you see is this barrage of self-promotion, people, yeah. agents saying, look at me. So show, so show humility. These mm. people are paying us good money, right? We don't, they already don't like us. Don't make it worse for ourselves. That's true. You know what works really good? And we encourage people to do it. Um, doing something back to the community. Like, you know, if I work in a, in a certain suburb, it's going to be something like really good if you sponsor um, a school or uh, donate blood or uh, do fundraising for, like, you know, for a uh, hospital or something. It's just saying thank you to your clients because marketing is expensive, right? We can spend like whatever it takes to market something because I bought a new car or something. I would rather to pay something back to my community that they feed me and they give me business to me and my team and my family and put food on my table. That works like magic. So, Ramiz, the community agent is the winning agent. The agent that brings the community together the agent that becomes the ecosystem of the community, the center of the community. And as far as I'm concerned, the community's paying for you to have a good living for you and your family. Give something back to the community, because if you don't, you'll be paying tax on that. And I've got to tell you, I'd rather be giving it to the community than giving it to the tax man. <laughs> very true, very true. Um, if you want to be a unique real estate agent, and you want to stand out from all the crowd and you do something perfectly right, one last advice you give us before you leave, what would that be? We live in a world where you can build a personal brand in the fraction of the time it used to be when print media was the prime vehicle for real estate. Now on social media, between Google, search engines, rating sites, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you can build a personal brand. The truth is, we all own our own TV channels now. And we are the chief content providers on that TV channel. We can build an audience, a tribe that's got our vibe, right? And um, the bigger the tribe, the bigger the vibe. And I've got to say to you, you've got this golden opportunity within a fraction of the time it used to take to actually build an incredible personal brand in the community. I would say, put time and energy into content creation and content curation that serves the community. Doesn't serve you, serves the community. Social media is about educating and making the lives of the people that consume the content better. It's not about making yourself feel better. Tom, thank you very much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching our Hunters channel and we'll see you in the next episode.